Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the new Tier 9 Premium Spanish Cruiser, the Amarate Quindo import to review for you guys today. I'm sure I probably mispronounced that. I apologize in advance. So the Amarate here is the new dockyard ship for this patch. Well, next patch after that as well. So you can obtain this ship in the dockyard for the low cost of, if you take advantage of the Head Start packs, 3,000 doubloons plus completing the grind. So for the mere price of 3,000 dubs plus a bit of a grind, you can get this ship. Or if you already have the Tier 6 Premium German Cruiser, the Leipzig, you can get this ship completely for free by just grinding out the combat missions. Altern alternatively, if you do wish to just get this ship right away, then, well, that's going to cost a, a little bit more. If you want to buy it outright, it will run you about $136 if you buy both of the uh, Head Start bundles, which I would highly encourage you to do so if you're planning on buying the ship outright. If you don't do that, and for whatever reason, you just really feel like giving more gaming all of your money, you will be spending about $160 on this Tier 9 Premium Cruiser. Um, obviously, either way, I would highly encourage you guys to grind the ship for as free as you can get it, right? I, I don't think you need to dump almost 200 bucks on a bunch of pixels but should you grind for this ship anyway well that's what we are going to take a look at today so i haven't played this ship at all i just got her out of the dockyard which segues into our next next little uh segment massive shout out to the channel's patreon supporters i am not a cc so i do not get this ship or any of the premium ships you've seen on the channel thus far for free which means you have to purchase them using the generous donations from the channel's Patreons and the ad revenue for the channel. So if you wish to support the channel, supporting the channel and Patreon is the best place to do so, by, uh, um, except for, of course, just watching the videos and the streams. So again, a massive shout out to those guys whose names should have just been up on screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Amarante today. So this is her war paint camouflage that you do get after... Completing the docker. Very clean look. I really like it. It's got that, you know, that ocean liner uh, type of color scheme going on there. Very nice. Um, again, some of the previous uh, previous ones are a little bit over the top with like the bow decorations and such. You got a, a nice little bit of like gold, I guess, what was this leafing or whatever you want to call it there. But other than that, pretty clean. So I do like that. There is unfortunately no crew standing out on deck some of the other ships have that but it looks like the amarante does miss out on that here but anyway so you look at her other color schemes uh permanent permanent camo so we've got oh no don't don't is it just gray no art department please 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 it's just gray. what year is the ship designed 1947 i mean Okay, but like, why just gray? What, what? It's so hard to just do something like that, or like that, or, you know, just something that looks a little more visually pleasing than just gray. Uh, like, but uh, and if I take it off, it's it's just like a lighter shade of gray with what? No, no, it doesn't even get rid of the rust. Oh, come on. Come on. Well, it gets rid of some of the rust. Eh. Uh, that's that's a big sad wow ah uh, man i i i do not like that okay but that is the alternative camouflage scheme if you will all right so take a look at her economy of course you do get the bonus package that comes with tier nine ships 10 percent boost to credits and 100 percent boost to your various xps on top of this being a outright premium ship you can tell by the icon being colored in here so it does get that nice baked in economic bonus that tier 9 premiums get as well so again this should be a pretty solid credit printer one way or another all right looking at her armor she has a tier 9 cruiser which gives her a 25 millimeter bow a 50 millimeter uh, millimeter little icebreaker bow right here 27 millimeter upper belt 40 millimeter main belt with the torpedo protection so that's pretty nice you know so you can't get overmatched by um <clears throat> 30 uh, not 32 six uh 460 millimeter 18.1 inch guns 
because it's 40 millimeters thick here, not 32. So that's a nice little touch there. Um, the stern is 25. You get a little bit of plating here that's 50. Stern deck is 25. Deck is 27. So, you know, a lot of light cruiser IFHG shells can go through that. Well, even without IFHG by tier 9 standards. And then the superstructure is 16 millimeters. Turrets are 152 on the front, 102 on the side and the roof, and the rears are 50. Let's take a look at that Citadel. Where it be? The Citadel is... Ooh. Ooh. That is... Oh, yeah, that is a Citadel. Wow, that's uh, there. Is it covered? Uh, I think you got a little bit of... Oh, sorry, that's superstructure. Okay. Oh, okay. So you get the Torpedo Bulge. And then you get a 110 millimeter belt on the inside in between the torpedo bulge and the citadel. So you get some spaced armor effects going on in there, which can cause funny things to happen. That being said, it's 110 millimeters thick, 30 millimeter citadel, and then 40 millimeter torpedo bulge. So 110 plus 30 is 140, plus the 40 for the bulges is 180 millimeters thick. But again, the spaced armor effect, you might have some goofy stuff happen, like with the French armor. But I suspect if big enough shells find your side, it really won't matter all that much. Or shells that have enough armor penetrating capability. Alright, so you get 48,300 hit points base, 16% per, uh, torpedo damage reduction with her torpedo bulges. Her artillery, you get 12 203mm guns with a 13 second reload with a maximum dispersion of 154 meters and a maximum range of 17.6 kilometers base. That's actually pretty good. Um, HE shells do a maximum damage of 2,850. They have a 17% fire chance though. That's pretty good. 34 millimeter of pin base, which is very good. Get you over that 32 millimeter threshold. 814 meter a second uh, is their initial shell velocity. AP does 4,500 maximum damage which with another 814 meter a second maximum velocity. Uh, secondary guns, you get 6x2 of the 90 millimeter guns, 4 second reload time, 7 kilometer maximum range, with a maximum damage rating of 1,300, and a 5% fire chance, 15 millimeter, uh, uh, 15 millimeters of armor penetration, and 860 meters a second on their initial velocity. I suspect, again, that's more for dual purpose AA than actual secondary bidness. Alright, 2x3, 533 torch with an 8 kilometer range, 16,633 maximum damage, torpedoes go 62 knots, and are detectable from 1.3 kilometers, and have a reload time of 108 seconds. So, a little bit better than average torpedoes, you know, for a cruiser that's pretty heavy gun focus. 8 kilometer range, that's definitely workable. Uh, you do get two attacking flights of the depth charge aircraft. They drop two bombs per payload, maximum damage of 4,200 per bomb. A defense rating is 70. You get 20 of the 20 millimeter... Ooh, what are these? Something... Spanish? They're 20 millimeter guns, so you get 20 single mounted 20 millimeter guns. Uh, 16 by 2 of the 37 millimeter uh, guns, and then, of course, the... 6x2 of the 90mm dual purpose secondary guns. Continuous damage rating of 325, uh, 1260 damage per flak burst, and then a 50% buff to her priority sector reinforcement. With, oh my god, a range of 4.6 kilometers. That is useless. Okay. Uh, maneuverability, maximum speed of 36 knots base. Not bad. 790 meter turning circle radius and 11.3 second rudder shift time. Consumit base rating of 14 kilometers. Now for her box of gimmicks. So of course she is a Spanish cruiser, which means she has an alternative firing mode, which is actually a different type of shell that gives you a 20% buff to your dispersion at the cost of a 42.3% increase to your main battery reload time. So with 12 to 203 millimeter guns. Of course, catch them on broadside, load up that AP, slap the crap out of them, is what I'm seeing there with that. So you have a choice of fighter or spotter, and then hydro or DFAA. Uh, three heals base that regener uh, regen 241 HP per second, with a 28 second cooldown time, sorry, a 28 second action time and an 80 second cooldown time. Then you get a damage con that is active for 5 seconds. So... 
let's go ahead and put a commander a commander and module build here on this ship all right for the module build i went with bane armaments mod one this gives the main battery guns a better chance of not becoming incapacitated by giving them a 20 a 20 buff to their risk of becoming incapacitated a 50 percent buff to their main to the main battery survivability and a 20 percent buff to the main battery repair time so add that to the um torpedo tubes as well so of course it's a you know, a main gun focused cruiser, so you want your main guns to stay in the fight. I then went with Engine Room Protection Mod 1, which gives you a 20% buff to the chance of your engine becoming inca incapacitated, along with a 20% buff to the repair time, and same to the rudder as well. Because again, if that stuff gets knocked out, that's hella unfortunate for a cruiser because your maneuverability is a large part of your survivability. So obviously, we want that to not get knocked out, obviously, as much as possible. Moving on, I went ahead and took Aiming Systems Mod 1, which gives us a further 7% buff to the main battery shell dispersion, and a 20% buff to the rotation time of the torpedo tubes, and a 5% buff to the secondary battery firing range and their dispersion. Obviously, again, taking that mostly for the main battery guns. I'm not really sure what else you would take in this spot for the Equendo, because, like, the rotation time, it's already got, like, a what? Um, a 22 second rotation time that's pretty fast I mean I guess you could take it but like I mean getting the shells to land on target more often without having to swap over to the modified shells I mean why why not right so yeah I mean I guess you could take swap it out for the rotation module but that's about all I would really see uh, and then engine I'm sorry propulsion mod one because having a quicker acceleration deceleration time is pretty good. Well, I think it's, it just affects the acceleration. So this cuts the time it takes you to take to reach full engine power by half, so you can get up and go faster. And for a cruise that's probably going to be popping in and out of islands, that can be the you know the difference between life and death. So that's why I took it. Um, I guess if you really want to, you could take steering gears mod one if you want to be a little bit open water gunboaty with it. But again, the turret rotation time it's decent, but I don't think good enough to where, where you can really you know be swapping back and forth all the time to uh, from the side that you're shooting on right. And the damage con mod two maybe, but you already have the cruiser burn time, so it's so short. Why bother with it? So that's my logic there. And then, of course, Consuma uh, Systems Mod 1. This gives you a 10% buff to your detectability range. And, you know, being stealthy and having the ability to pick and choose your engagements is a massive advantage that you should try to get. So that's why we are taking that. And then Main Battery Mod 3 for the 12% buff to the reload time of the main battery guns. But this does give you the 13% debuff to the turret rotation speed. So, fast reload with the guns, slower rotation time. Again, 22 seconds is something that I, I think I can still live with on a cruiser. We'll see. I might change it, but more shells going down range faster, more damage is being done. And plus two, the cruiser already has a 17 kilometer range, which is pretty good by cruiser standards. And we have the spotting plane if we need a little bit more out of that. So, for the commander build, I just used one of my already built Spanish commanders. Pretty much, I wouldn't really change too much with this build, um, except maybe taking Demolition Expert instead of Safety Circle, but it's 17% fire chance. That's pretty good already. But anyway, so for our one-point skills, we have Last Stand, which allows the rudder and steering gears to still be active if they do get knocked out, because again, cruisers, maneuverability is your... Live, uh, is your life, right? So you want to, even if it does get knocked out, have something to move around with. I uh, then took Gun Feeder because, again, when you see those opportunities, you can use your alternative shells and swap on over from HE to AP 40% quicker than if you had to sit there and wait for the guns to reload the full time. So that's an up. Then we took Grease the Gears to offset the um, debuff we got from the reload module. This gives you a 15% buff to the tra traverse speed. So you're getting a 2% buff out of it because of the reload module's debuff of 13%. And then Adrenaline Rush because, well, if you are going to take damage, you should get something out of it. This gives you a 0.2% buff to your reload time for your torpedo tubes and your main battery guns per 1% of HP lost. And then went ahead and took Heavy AP Shells because this is literally free damage. 5% damage, 5% uh, buff to the amount of damage your AP Shells are doing. Again, free damage. 
And then superintendent for an additional charge of the hydro spotter plane and the hill. And then survivability expert for another 450 HP per tier. So by tier 10, you're getting 4,500 more HP, more HP, more life, ship live longer, you do more damage. And then lastly, went ahead and took concealment expert for another 10% buff to the ship's detection range. So now what that gives you with the Equendo. The main battery guns, we have an 11.4 second reload time, and the AP is now doing a maximum damage of 4,725. And maneuverability with the flag is now up to 37.8 knots. And for the consumer, we're down to 11.3 kilometers, which is pretty darn good. I believe that is it for what the build has done for the ship. Yes, I believe so. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Aquindo into battle, and we'll meet you guys there with a voiceover review of her. All righty, so the Amarate Aquindo, Okindo, Aquindo, Okindo, whichever one's supposed to be. May not even be one of those two. Again, I apologize. Um, it's a ship I didn't really have to spend a whole lot of time with, because just like... Another recent ship review. Um, the ship felt instantly familiar because it is yet again another high tier HE spammy Kaidi cruiser, just like the Cerberus. Again, 12 guns, 203 millimeter guns. You know, you can pin 32 with the HE. You go to a flank, you annoy the enemy ships, they shoot at you instead of shooting at the team, and you farm them down in the process. And it's a ship that, yeah, it did that, it did it well, and that's what it does. The burst fire, not the burst fire, the funny button, the alternative firing mode, is, I don't want to say useless, because that's a pretty strong word. It was highly situational from what I experienced. Because, I mean, burst fire mode that I initially wanted to say, that's something that's pretty dang useful. Getting a quick follow-up, you know, one or two salvos on a target is very useful. It's useful when you're firing AP, useful when you're firing HE. It's useful with AP, when someone shows you broadside, you can pump, you know, two salvos into them quite quickly, as with the Castilla, you know, the Tier 10 Techline Spanish Cruiser. It's also great for when you are HE spamming a ship and they put the fire out, Great, let their damage con run, go into your burst fire mode, get two more follow-up salvos, probably get a fire two started on them. That is a great, highly useful alternative firing mode. These alternative shells, as they call them, where you get a 20% buff to your dispersion, which is most definitely noticeable, it's not really that terribly useful. Outside of, again, very, very strict conditions, like there's a broadside cruiser to me from like 10 kilometers in. Because at that range, you know, the 203 millimeter AP shells can really do some damage. You, you know, put that in the tubes, hit your funny button, and let the shells fly. And now the target ship has 12 pretty accurate 203 millimeter shells flying at its broadside. That's really the only situation I would find it useful. Why? Because you're giving up 40% of your DPM in order to use it. So, with your other main munition type that you're going to be using for 90% of your existence with the Okendo, Okendo, again, however you say it, HE doesn't really have a use for that too, too much. Outside of, I could think, you know, maybe trying to finish off a destroyer, because of course destroyers are quick and wily creatures. So if you can, you know, flip over to your alternative HE shells that are 20% more accurate, well, have 20% less, dis less dispersion, and you can nail that sucker because you're just that good at aiming, sure, that's something you can do. But HE is something you tend to want to hit, you know, as much real estate on a ship as possible. Why? Because there are certain points on those ships that fires can be set. 
So typically, you know, ideally, if you can get your HE shells to hit as many of those fire points in a single salvo as possible, you're getting, you know, essentially the maximum coverage on that ship and therefore the maximum, maximum chance of starting a fire. Because if you keep hitting a ship in the exact same spot with HE over and over and over again, they're already on fire there. So you want to try to hit you know, somewhere else in the ship and get a fire started somewhere else. So if they're on the bow and you keep hitting their bow with HE, that's great, but their bow's already on fire. You want to hit them in the stern or in the midsection and get, you know, one of those two fire points on target. I'm sorry, on, on fire. So with a hyper-accurate firing mode, um, outside again of wanting to maybe nail a superstructure because in the background footage you're watching right here, the Montana was just kind of sitting still. So I just you know, gave it a whirl with the HE shells and the alternative alternative shells. And it's like, yeah, you know, I could nail the superstructure of the Montana and, you know, just keep nailing him with the HE for the HE alpha, but that's going to get saturated pretty fast. So again, it would just be better if I was just firing in my normal firing mode with the, you know, normal reload and not giving up, you know, 40% of my reload to get these slightly more accurate shells. If the Okendo, Okendo had bigger guns, like, you know, maybe like 240s or something that could really pack a punch at range, it would probably be more useful but with 203 millimeter shells, I just feel like a burst fire mode would have been better for the ship. Um, that's not saying the ship is like bad or anything. It's, again, a very capable HE spammer. What you're seeing in the background was pretty run-of-the-mill for what I was experiencing in the Kendo. Quindo. Um, this isn't like an overly awesome game or anything. It's just a pretty average game from my experience. So, yeah, it's a perfectly capable mid-range HC spammy HC farmy kiting cruiser again not unlike the Cerberus uh, she was a little bit more maneuverable I found with her better shift time that was pretty nice I racked up I think 3 million potential uh, potential damage in the background footage so I mean doing that with the cruiser is a pretty pretty uh you know I don't, I don't want to say, you know, a hard thing to do, but it's a pretty solid performance out of a uh, HE Spammy Kaidi Cruiser, right? 3 mil potential. So that was pretty good. Uh, the Torpedoes, 8 kilometer range, pretty usable. I mean, I use them here to great effect. Uh, an 8 kilometer torpedo range, of course, means that, you know, the torpedo will travel 8 kilometers from the point uh, at which you launch it. So if you're kiting ships into you and they're like 9 kilometers away or even 10 kilometers away and steaming full force into you after you, you can dump those torpedoes when they're at 10 kilometers and they will sell into them so you know that's pretty great the five kilometer hydro is really nice great for dealing with submarines and spotting enemy ship torpedoes and such so that's quite usable again spotter is very usable it gives you a 20 percent buff to your range uh with the blue reload mod and the spotter we were right at i think 21 kilometers with the guns which Again, with 203 millimeter guns, the flight time at that range is pretty long, so I think that's about the maximum you'd really want to push it anyway. So that was fine. And again, it did a perfectly fine job of spamming HE and setting ships on fire and doing damage and doing things that other cruisers in the game are just fine at. Going up like the British um, heavy cruiser line, the was it the, the the Duncan or whatever the the tier nine um, British heavy cruiser is, it's also really good at this. But it's a tech line ship and it's free to grind, and you don't have to pay anything for it. The Drake, the Duncan's the tier nine battle cruiser. Yeah, the Drake's you know better at kiting than this thing, but of course the Drake isn't a tier nine premium ship. The Almirante Quindo is a tier 9 premium ship. So you get all the tier 9, you know, economies and buffs to it. I was only running green signal flags in this background for this average background uh, game. I got like 780 mil. Uh, I wish I got 780 million credits. I got 780,000 credits for, again, just spamming HE and occasionally throwing some AP every now and then. Didn't even get a kill this match, but again, you know, it's doing great because it's a tier 9 uh, premium ship. So, you know. It's got that going for it for sure, and definitely, you know, if you're looking for a tier 9 farmer, it'll do it, and again, with the economy, it'll make credits just fine. So, it's got that going for it, but is it worth, of course, the grind? Well, I mean, 
you get the ship, you get all these goodies up on screen, you know, this is what you get for going through the entire event. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of free stuff, you get the Leipzig out of it too. Um, and keep in mind too, you can get everything that I showed up on screen, uh, except for of course whatever's in the last two phases, because you have to buy those, for free. You can grind all that for free and get all those goodies for free. And then, of course, if you want to pay for the two phases for the ship, which you just buy the starter bundle right now for 3,000 dubs and just grind your way through the rest of the event, you can have this ship for 3,000 dubs, which is a pretty good deal, in my opinion, for a solid HE Spammy Tier 9 premium ship that can potentially be a pretty solid credit printer. Of course, too, if you are looking for, like, the best HE Spammy Tier 9 premium credit printer, that would be something like the Azuma, which is a coal ship and is completely free. But if you just want something Spanish, here it is. <laughs> if you want, like, a Spanish Tier 9 Goliath without the Super Hill, here it is, right? Um... So, that being said, would I you know, recommend you stop what you're doing and grind the ship out like the Wisconsin? Eh, no. <laughs> I think you could miss this ship and not really miss much, although they don't really bring the dockyard ships back, so if you do want to get it, you do, you know, gotta kind of get out there and get to it, champ, right? But I, I, I don't think you'll really be missing anything if you pass this one, guys. Um, you know, again, we just had a really great dockyard with the Wisconsin. I think it's a pretty solid follow-up because, again, the ship itself is perfectly capable of being your average Tier 9 HE Spammy Cruiser. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just like, again, another Tier 9 HE Spammy Cruiser that's a Tier 9 Premium. That's where I'm seeing most of the value here, not really in any of like the ship's aspects because, again, it's just your average Tier 9 Premium Heavy Cruiser. So... If you're looking for a tier 9 premium ship that's, you know, good HE farmer, good for farming damage, and a, you know, pretty solid all-around credit printer, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Again, for 3,000 dubs, getting a tier 9 premium ship and all the goodies that you saw on the, um, the reward screen, yeah, I think it's worth it for that aspect. But if you're looking for, like, a super amazing ship that you need to, you know, stop what you're doing right now and grind it, definitely not it. Again, you could pass this one up and not really be any worse for, for wear. Um, other than, you know, maybe you might wind up getting it in the center container event at the end of the year. But again, that's neither here nor there. So, you know, if it looks interesting, if you want a tier 9 premium ship that's a pretty solid credit farmer and you're willing to grind and pay 3,000 dubs for it, or if you already have the Leipzig, you can get it completely for free. Um, yeah, go for it. But I wouldn't really stress about grinding this one out, guys. If you've got another tier 9 premium HE spammy ship, you've got this thing, right? The The alternative firing mode isn't really interesting enough to really warrant getting the ship. Um, again, if the guns were a little bit bigger, maybe if it was like, you know, more of those battle cruiser -y tier 9s like the Alaska, the Kronstadt, maybe it was like a Spanish version of that with that alternative firing mode, you know, like some 305, 310 millimeter guns with that alternative firing mode. Yeah, that would be pretty darn good and pretty interesting, but it's not. So, overall, a numerical rating, I would give this ship a 6 out of 10. It's a slightly above average tier 9 premium cruiser because it does have the alternative firing mode and it is pretty maneuverable and the torpedoes are quite useful and it does have the useful hydro. And from what I experienced, it's, you know, you don't just look at it and, and it explodes. I mean, again, I got 3 mil potential here um, while being the center of quite a few ships' attention for quite some time. So, again, just a slightly above average tier 9 premium HE Spammy kiting cruiser, in my humble opinion. Pros, of course, being the 12 203 millimeter guns at tier 9. It's quite a bit of firepower at tier 9. Uh, the excellent HE fire chance of 17%. You definitely don't really need to worry about taking Demolition Expert because you will be starting fires with these shells. Um, the AP is alright. I, I wouldn't really put it in like a pro or a con category. It's just alright. The alternative firing instructions or the alternative firing mode or the alternative shells, whatever the hell they're called, it is like a buff. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a bonus, you know, it's 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 a pro when you do catch those, you know, broadside cruisers from, you know, 10, 11-ish kilometers away. It will put a hurting on them, but again, it's not a massive buff. You get the heal, uh, Hydro DFAA, Fighter or Spotter, it's a pretty maneuverable ship. 
Uh, the cons only being really that um, it's just like every other tier 9 <laughs> on the HG Spammy Cruiser. So, I mean, you know, of course, you do have to deal with the very long reload time after you do use the, um, the alternative shells. And, I mean, really... It's a cruiser, so if you do catch some battleship shells, you are going to have a a, a a bad time. But I don't think that's really a con. That's just being a cruiser, right? It's pretty average all around, so yeah. So again, guys, this is my two cents on the Amarante Oquindo. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you're planning on grinding through the doctor for the ship or not. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.